We'll do something similar now for all of the buildings. And again, it, this does depend a little bit on the um, original drawing having at least some layer structure in that the buildings are drawn on the, the layer of their own. Um, but there are ways to manipulate that also. Uh, in this case, that's the case. So we can just open up our window editor, make sure that our site boundary um, layer is set to just hitable. And if we go to our buildings layer, which is where are we? somewhere up here, site buildings. And again, we can, if we just select them all, we'll see they'll highlight, hopefully. Pink. And I've not got the right layer. Oh, this, there we are. All right, so F10, F7. Got them all there. And we can use the spaghetti trace again. This time we can call it, uh, let's just say buildings. Click on OK. And again, we can apply a style. So in this case, let's just apply 50% uh, fill onto that one. And immediately we've got our buildings um, displayed um, in a similar way to the uh, buildings that we displayed in the um, Exeter sample data. And we can keep going on. We can, um, let's make that hitable. Let's have a look this time at the, the sports areas. Make that editable. Um, I'm going to make the layer, let's make it a shade of green so we can see what's going on with this. Uh, there we go, that's fine. Click on close. Again, we can do a selection. So we've identified all of the um, sports areas there. So this is, in effect, all of the um, uh, the grass activity areas. And we can again use our fill and we can call that sports areas. And we're using sensible naming to start applying structure to the data. And again, we can use a different uh, fill. Let's make it a say a 40% fill this time. And it picked up the co color from the um, uh, the layer that we just changed. And again, that's one way we can manipulate the presentation. So you can see that um, w for just a few minutes' work, um, you can turn what is a simple unstructured line drawing into um, a fully coloured presentation drawing without having to go through the whole process of exporting to a, um, a paint application and then having to redo that every time you make a change and so on. Now I've already set up a view or a file that's got this um, already created for us so we go to site colour and this is what I ended up with. I've just oriented the view back to um, um, the map grid which um, it was oriented to the building you can set up any um, view orientation that you want and save that. Uh, so, for example, if we wanted to align the um, the view with the, the running track, for example, just to, to show you how it's done, if we just um, align the axes with the uh, the running track area here, and then we can just switch the alignment and so on. So just revert back to the previous view and put our axes back into their original position. So you can see that um, the, the process um, carried through into the, the whole drawing gives us a, a, a nice presentation drawing as a basis for our master plan. Once you've got your um, base drawing for your master plan, it's then a relatively simple matter to start overlaying the information that you need to add to the, to the drawing. So for example here we're showing in red the bus routes and the vehicle entry points to the site and in blue the pedestrian access points and it's as simple as just using normal uh, drawing tools so for example we can just position our pedestrian entrance here and just adding graphics with an appropriate style applied the styles themselves you can have as many as you want if I just have a quick look at a, an example that we have I just briefly put together for this demonstration. These are styles that I created in a few minutes just to uh, um, cover various options of what you can do. So you can have multiple colours within the style, you can have uh, patterns of different sizes, you can have symbols embedded in the, the line style. Um, for example we have here a, a, a break symbol that we just repeated continuously along a line. We've got a triangle symbol here. Um, you can have arrowheads here at the ends of the different line styles and here along the midpoints of each segment of the line style. So you're um, pretty much allowed to 
let your imagination run free reign with uh, uh, implementation of these styles. Let's just close that down. One of the things that's very useful um, when uh, looking at master planning, of course, is 3D information about the site itself. So if you've got terrain data, in particular if you've got spot heights for your site, which can be either from surveys or just from, uh, from the mapping information, you can use that to generate terrain models automatically. And if we have a quick look at another file from the same data set here that uh, we're looking at, which is actually for a, um, a grammar school campus master plan, if we open up the 3D version of the data, what we've done here is we've just run a routine over the um, 3D height values that we had for the site, and some of it was from the Ordnance Survey map, which is why you get such large triangles in, in parts of the, uh, the model, and some of it's from an actual site survey, which uh, explains why we have a, a much denser concentration of, uh, of triangles in the area around the buildings themselves. And we can render that with the site plan that we've just created can be exported as a, a bitmap and then just um, draped over your 3D terrain. So you can create 3D versions of that map quite simply. So if I just click on render now, very quickly we will get a version of that site terrain model with the map superimposed. And the map's already there but it's going through the uh, refinement process so it's actually improving the quality you've seen a progressive um, rendering and it's just about finished it's just taken 22 seconds to do that so what we've got here is is the um, the terrain set up with the um, the graphics that we used to create the 2d site plan superimposed as a, a, a bitmap um, a skirt or sheet over the whole thing um, the area here that um, is bitten out out of the model is just um, uh, a chunk that we took out to give us a site platform on which to insert um, proposals for new building work in in that particular area. Close that render down. Um, you can of course maneuver around your, your model and you can manipulate the model as well uh, using various 3D tools. There are two versions of MicroGDS. You can buy um, the collaboration version which is what you're looking at here and the entry level version um, the difference between the two is purely to do with the, um, the range of 3D modeling tools that you get, which on the entry-level version is very limited, and the fact that you can uh, only do rendering in the collaboration version. So that last view that we looked at would only be possible in the um, collaboration version. But actually creating the model would be possible within the uh, entry-level version. Let's close all those files down. Again, we're not going to save anything that we've done to change them for the time being. 